Vader Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes, with us. Paul Catalina, Craig, and David Smoke on 365 Sports. Mac, thank you very much for your time. Uh, this is not in any way to compare to where Baylor was and what you had to deal with, the dark clouds and controversy when you arrived in the summer of 2016. But has the football program's decline been pretty much next up as one of your toughest challenges right now as an AD? Oh, wow. That's a, that's a good question. You know, I, I think it, it depends upon how you, how you, you know, you, you look at it, right, you, and you think about it. Um, it's a, certainly a tough stretch, a tough patch, because, um, you know, we're disappointed. You know, after, after four games, right, um, you know, we, we certainly didn't expect to be, to be one and three. And the, and the Texas State loss was, was obviously a, a, a tough loss. You know, when you, when you think about, you know, both, both Utah and, and, and Texas, right? Those are, those are two teams that, you know, are, are, you know, top 10. I didn't see the latest AP. I'm not sure exactly where Utah was, but, uh, certainly if they're not top 10, they're right. They're right there, and um, you know, statistically, you know, two of the most elite defenses. Um, you know, and and you think about the the three losses; those those teams have a combined eleven and one record. Now, again, certainly, certainly inexcusable, and no disrespect to to lose to to Texas State. So, you know, from from that perspective, that's that's really that's really tough, and uh, and so. Um, you know all of the, all of the, um, you know the, the the negativity right that that surrounds all of that. And, you know having to having to nav- navigate that. You know, but um, but I think you know the, the 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 positive for me is you know I've I've walked into you know some some athletic departments as as athletic directors right where. The, the football program has has been on a on a decline and, and headed in the wrong wrong direction and um, you know those those programs the, the culture wasn't good um, you know there was dysfunction with within the walls um, you know players had had given up on coaches there was discontent obviously amongst players finger pointing um, there was a uh, disconnect with, with coaching staff, right? All of those things. And, and then when you looked at the, at the roster, you know, the, the just, there wasn't a lot of necessarily, you know, hope, hope for the future. And, um, and, and I, I really think we're in a, we're in a much, much better uh, and different situation than, than, uh, than, than any of those. You know, you, you look at stuff like 60% of the snaps, you know, this season have come from our, our first or our second year players, right? Um, I think about, you know, the 2020 season. That was a tough season. Um, and yet in 2021, we win the Big 12 championship in the, in the Sugar Bowl with that same roster. Um, and so, you know, we we've got, I think, um, uh, a program that, although the first four games have been tough and, and difficult, um, I do think that there is there is uh, a lot of positive about about the program. So I don't know, you know, I, I I think you know I would I would have probably just candidly answered the question, Smoke, and I, and I apologize for taking so long to answer. I probably, as I'm thinking through this. Probably would have said, yeah, absolutely. It's the it's the second hardest stretch by by far. If I if I did if I thought it was a you know we were in a, a a situation where I thought we were spiraling you know downward and and there was no hope. But there again, there's a lot of a lot of positivity uh, about uh, a lot of positive things about about the football program. That, that I know and understand that, that not everybody you know gets to see um, because they're not they're not part of it on a on a day to day basis. Mac, do you have you had to because it's rapidly 
you know, you have to break kind of old habits of doing things when, you know, you had to assess a, a, a program differently because you're trying to build five years out now because people can reset rosters and do things quickly. Do you have a bit of a, a different way of looking at where a coaching staff is, where a roster is, where a team is, uh, maybe a little bit differently than I don't see how we can get out of this in four years uh, other than, hey, uh, there could be a quick reboot at, at the end of the season. Yeah, well, first of all, you know, I, I'm not throwing away this. Uh, we, we still have eight games, and uh, and I think we have a quality roster. You know, I think we've had some 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 bad luck. Um, no excuse for it. Um, but you know, we we've had some 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 injury, right? And uh, and you know, and some some inexperience. Um, you know, so um, you know this. This game, right? We could get as many as, as seven players back that uh, would have played a lot of snaps for us that, that haven't been been able to. Um, you know, um, we'll see if we if we get if we get Blake back. And so, um, you know, I I still expect us to, to have a you know uh, a really really good remainder remainder of the year. And and again. You know, when you when you think about how the how the schedule set up, and uh, particularly, you know, front end loaded with with a Utah and a, and a Texas. Now, you know, the there, there's not an easy game, you know, that that remains on our on our schedule. So, and then Paul, just uh, you know, things have changed and and you evolve, and uh, you know, it's it's certainly different now with the with the roster and you know all of the conversation. And, and uh, and uh, the, the the transfer portal portal right and how you can you can change a roster fairly quickly. You can't do you can't do what Colorado did. You can you can only do that as a as a first time coach coming in, you know. But um, so you you can't be that that drastic. But you you have opportunity to to really help yourself in in you know in some in some uh, some some different different positions. So. Uh, yeah, you're just you're trying to navigate that that all, and, and so you, you do think about it a, a, a little bit differently um, than than maybe what you would have five, six, seven years ago. Mac, uh, obviously a big crowd on hand last Saturday. The the big send off for Texas, a prime time game, big time opportunity, and and the game you know got out of hand pretty quickly. Texas is is you know a top three team in the country, uh, but that was the end of an era, and it seemed like that place was a buzz at least at the beginning of that game. Just what were your thoughts on you know the event itself and and the send off of of this Texas Baylor football rivalry? Yeah, you know I was I was speaking to a group of. Uh, Prior, prior to the game, prior to the kickoff, and, and so I think first, first and foremost, it, it was it was a great, great atmosphere, great energy. Loved that our students came out in black. They were they were terrific. Um, a lot of a lot of good stuff, right? Um, but uh, you know, I, I think there's there's mixed emotions, you know, um, about you know not playing Texas anymore. Um, you know, I, it's it's a game, you know, that I that I think has has meant something to our to our fans. Uh, I think it's a game that has meant something to to, to their fans. Um, that's what a rivalry is, right? Uh, two institutions that don't necessarily like one another, respect one another, but but don't like one another. Um, and so, you know, you're you're going to miss that. Now, um, you know, we think about the the new Big Twelve and. And certainly the four in this year and the four new coming coming in, right? We'll we'll develop those those rivalries, but um, you know this this has been a long standing rivalry, and you know um, when you've had some success, you know certainly you know when when we think about just in recent years, um, it's probably not a rivalry that that you want to you know see see go away. Quite quite frankly, I think. You know, in the last 75 contests uh, against Texas in in uh, football, men's and women's basketball, we've won 75 percent of this, and uh, so we've been able to have some success. And uh, and you know, that's that's probably another reason why. Hey, you wish you were you were able to to hang on to the rivalry. And again, I I think it's been good for our fans, both sets of fans. 
Mac, you mentioned there are things that you see that maybe most don't, maybe outside of the program. Can you share what some of those are? Because obviously the, re- the results say otherwise. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that. You know, I, I think going back to the Texas game, and Craig, I think your exact words were it got out of got out of hand pretty pretty quickly. Um, and I I don't I don't know that I I disagree, right? Um, I've heard now two stats, right? We been we were in the red zone six times, we were in the red zone set seven times. Regardless, right? Uh, we scored six points. That's that's unacceptable. We we got to get better and. Doesn't matter who's playing at quarterback. Doesn't matter how young, you know, our, our offensive line is. Right, all of that. Um, doesn't matter that you know the, the the Texas defenders when we beat them in 2021, they were they were you know freshmen and sophomores, and now they're juniors and seniors. We we need to figure it out, and uh, and we we need to be better, and you know a lot more efficient than, than only six points in in terms of the in terms of the the, the red zone. So, you know, the things that, that I see are, are culture and, and the, the, uh, connectivity of the, of the team and the different conversations and the, and the lack of, 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 uh, finger pointing. And, um, you know, this is a team that, you know, despite one and three, uh, and, and nobody, you know, happy with the way we played, starting with Dave Aranda and and the staff, but also our our players. Like it's a it's a team that's still really close and uh, and still uh, really supportive of one another and and uh, supporting you know each other as individuals and taking ownership of of uh, of. Uh, you know, not not performing at, at maybe a level or executing at a level that that uh, that that they should, right? Not not saying, not blaming it on anybody else, but but taking that that ownership. And so, you know, um, it's still a, a really really healthy locker room. It's it's still a um, uh, a, a unit. And, and when I say unit, I'm talking about certainly you know, the, the 110 players, but also the, the coaching staff that, that is very much still on the same page. And I think, you know, pulling, pulling the rope in, in the same direction. So those are all of the little things, the energy in the meetings, uh, the energy out on the, 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 the practice field, players still being on time for everything, right? Um, all of those little things um, are still really, really, uh, really positive. And, you know, when you, you've been doing this long enough, teams teams that 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 um, that are that you know are, are are heading south and and there's there's not a lot of hope, right? None of those those things are are happening. There's pointing fingers. There's there's you know people you know blaming each other. There's there's people you know not pulling pulling the rope in the, in the same direction. All of a sudden, you know, the, the little things like being being on meetings, being to meetings on time, etc. All of that, all of that now is 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 uh, is is disregarded, and so you know the, the care factor really goes down. And and I will just you know probably the best way for me to, to summarize it is that the overall care factor within the program is still really really uh, really high. You know, everyone wants to, like, get rid of somebody. The loyalty that Dave Aranda showed Baylor after 12-2, and the best year ever, the Big 12 title, the Sugar Bowl. And and yet again, he also got a very nice chunk with an extension that you all at Baylor uh, offered and he accepted. But at the same time, it's, man, it's what have you done for me lately? In your opinion, the word pressure may not be the right word, but I think it's a fair question if – do you think Dave feels more pressure or do you do because that's the one you hired? Um, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of chuckling because Dave and I don't sit around Sunday night saying, Hey, you feel more pressure <laughs> or, I know. Or, 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 or do I feel, feel more pressure? Um, you know, I, I think, look, Dave's focused on, you know, how do we, how do we win games? You know, how do we get better? You know, um, how do we beat you know UCF on on uh, on Saturday? Quite quite frankly, and so yeah, I, I think you know he's human, 
and and he knows that that one and three isn't um, you know where we where we should be and um, you know um, and so he he gets that you know there there is some some pressure and there is some noise I don't think he's he's listening to the noise but he's you know again he's smart he knows that there's there's a there's a lot of chatter out there um, but I think he's he's focused on the, on the right things. And, and for me, again, I, I stay focused on, on what, what I can control, what we can control. And I would say the same for, for, for Dave. And so that's, that's where my focus is. And, and, uh, uh, you know, like I said, I, I think this, this, this program is, is healthy. And, uh, and I think that, uh, it's, it's got a bright future. Um, certainly not throwing this season away. Um, I think we have a, an opportunity to really, really compete. And, you know, I think I just saying, you know, in, in, in closing on this particular question, I've, I've got complete faith in, uh, in Dave Aranda. Mac, I uh, had gotten several questions during our, our post game show. And then, and then afterwards about uh, NIL and you've addressed it uh, many times about the structure and what you guys expect to do in the future. Uh, but most of them I told, like, look, I can't speak informally on, on how uh, Baylor has it or anybody does because there is it, everything's still kind of shrouded in some, some secrecy. Do you foresee an era, since it is within the rules for players to have name, image, and likeness, where we get some transparency on it and we, we don't treat it so cloak and dagger like it's still somehow against the rules? Yeah, no. Um, yes, I do foresee. I, I think – you know, one of the reasons why I think, you know, federal legislation is, is desperately needed is, is obviously, one, the preemption of, of state laws, right? And I think the number is it's it's 30 plus, it may be 33, but, you know, states that, that have their own name, image, and likeness rules, right? And so um, just a, a lot of different people doing it, doing it different ways and and some more advantageous than, than, than others. And so, you know, needing that, that level playing field. So federal, federal legislation can come in and preempt. Right. But then the, the, the person, uh, the, the piece that you've spoken to Paul is, is the transparency piece, right. Is, is for there to be great transparency and disclosure and really law and order of, of how we do that. Right. Protection, for our student athletes, when we think about consumer protection and and certification of agents, and you know uh, consistent contracts, and and then you know uh, transparency of, of the different deals, and you know this this idea of of, a, of establishing a, a fair market. So you know I, I do think that you know there'll there'll be a time. Um, you know, for that. And, um, and, you know, hopefully, hopefully sooner rather than later, you know, what's been so confusing is that, you know, initially uh, an athletic department couldn't even really talk about it. Certainly couldn't assist in helping, you know, uh, raise monies for, for name image and like this. And so there was just a lot of questions by our, by our constituents that, that we really couldn't, couldn't answer or, or speak into right, and now that has changed. So we've been able to, to to speak into it more. I think you saw, you know, for the first time, the the the, the, the video board and and really promoting name, image, and likeness, and, and that it's in important to 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 Baylor. It's important to, to us if we're going to be relevant. Um, I will tell you in the in the name, image, and likeness space of football. Uh, men's and women's basketball, we're, we're pretty healthy when we think about the the, the Big Twelve. We're, we're not we're not at the top, but I would say we're we're in the upper half. Um, so we're you know fighting, scratching, clawing in in that space. But uh, you know we'll we'll see where this thing heads. You know when I was talking about it the other day, it it feels like the the, the COVID period of time where you couldn't make plans, you know, uh, with, and, and be definitive, right. That, that you could make plans, but, but you also knew that you may have to 
pivot at a at a moment's notice, and that's what it feels like um, right now in, in terms of uh, you know working in the in the name, image, and likeness space. Because you know if if you ask anybody, you know, what's this look like in in three or four years, um, and they said, hey, I definitely know that it's going to be like this. Uh, I, I would say, yeah, wrong. There's none of us know. What, what this is going to look like in, in three to four years. This might be a better question for Dave Aranda, but you mentioned the locker room. It's not toxic. There's no finger pointing, and it's very close. Um, but in your opinion, have you and Dave talked about this, why that has not translated when a game kicks off with that type of lock in arms, hell-bent for election, we're here for each other? That doesn't seem to have carried over on the field. Yeah, great question, and and I do. I really appreciate. I really appreciate the question. As you can imagine, Dave and I have had a lot of conversations, and that yeah, absolutely, that's certainly one of them. Uh, because there is that, there is that togetherness. There is that care factor. Um, those kids run through a brick wall for for Dave Aranda. Um, that hasn't, you know, I haven't seen that that change at at all. Um, I think you know transferring and translating that to the, 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 the field on, on Saturday. Because if you look at our practices, they're high energy, they're competitive, they're physical, you know, all of those things. Why hasn't it necessarily translated to, to, the, to the field? Is it because we're playing so many, so many newcomers? Um, is it because we've had some, some injuries? You know, again, all of those are, are excuses. Um, and, and those might be, you know, the, the, the right answers as to why, but we, we've got to overcome that. And, uh, and we've got to figure out how um, we take, you know, the work that's being put in, you know, Sunday through, through Friday and, and make that show up on the field on, on Saturday. Mac Rose Baylor, Director of Athletics with us on 365 Sports. My last question for you, and it's non-football. I'm sure you're happy with that. The pavilion has announced the opening. We can talk as much football as you want. No, okay. Uh, The pavilion has announced their opening dates on January 2nd and 3rd for both men's and women's basketball. Uh, Just the fact that you have dates and that that's when it opens and just kind of that next step of when that opens up at the early part of the year. Yeah, you know, um, we were happy to to announce that, right? Um, Obviously, you know, there's still when, you know, when we're, we're talking end of September and, you know, we're projecting those dates and completion, you know, um, three months, you know, in advance, um, there's, there's always a possibility that, that that could change and, and something happens that, that we're certainly not, not anticipating in terms of the, the construction timeline, but at least right now and today and, and we, needed to release the schedule we feel really really uh we feel really positive really really good about it um so we're we're excited you know uh, they there there are some some things that that have to you know happen here in the in the next uh you know few days um you know we got to get the, the the air conditioning on right in the in the in the building why do why does the air conditioning need to come on because we, we need to bring in the, the maple wood floor and it needs to cure, right? And, and that can't be done unless it's a conditioned space. And so there's some of those things that, um, you know, we, we think that, that uh, all things are, are positive, but, um, you know, not, not 100% sure. And, and that's why, you know, we said, hey, those are the second and third are, are targeted and we feel really, really good about it. And uh, we'll, we'll communicate if, if anything changes. Mac, I, I want to go back in my last question. I promise you this. I said that, but but uh, you mentioned earlier that you have all the faith in the world in Dave Aranda. That's not that dreaded vote of confidence. That's not what you were doing. I didn't ask you for that, but that's where you are right now, correct? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's where I'm at. Thanks for your time. We appreciate it. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Baylor Director of Athletics, Mac Rhodes with us, usually on Tuesdays.